I can't do this on What's Drake's secret? We put the question to rapper and radio host Odario Williams. Back in the day, if you wrote down the lyrics to a hip hop yeah. song, you're turning pages on yeah. pages on pages. If you write lyrics to this song down, you love me, I said it only partly. My mom, I'm sorry. You know, it's over. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. it it's very, very sparse, but it, I think it's also adding to what our brains need right now. God's plan. On his new double album, Drake shows off different sides from crooner to tough guy, and that range has helped him generate mass appeal. There's something about him that you you can't necessarily pin down that allows him to have many personas in his under his one umbrella. So what is the reaction like? Oh, it's pandemonium. Radio host Gemini was there when Drake was first making the transition from acting to music. Just very earnest, very sweet, and he knew he was going to make it. She says Drake's vulnerability is part of the appeal, but she says his real genius is taking a city's signature sound, such as Toronto's Caribbean flavors, and using it to connect to fans around the world. But that's the beautiful thing about him is everyone feels like the hometown guy is repping them. Because when I'm in Atlanta, they feel like the home, he's, he's our guy. When you're in Memphis, they're like, that's our boy. In England, you know what I mean? So they all feel like this is our guy. I've been moving calm, don't start no trouble with me. Beyond the music, Drake is business savvy. He's conquered streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music. Those sales now factor into the Billboard music chart, which means Drake's double album makes an even bigger impact. You don't get to the numbers that he's getting to if everybody's going in and listening to it once and then going, well, yep, I heard the new Drake, that's all I need. They're going back and listening over and over and over. And when you go 25 songs deep, that's something new. That's 25 new things for people to discover. And with hip hop music now the biggest genre in streaming, Drake's reign shows no signs of ending. Eli Glasser, CBC News, Toronto. So by one measure, Drake is in the same camp as the Beatles. Heresy to some, I know, but you can see it yourself on the most influential U.S. music chart, the Billboard Hot 100. Of course, music and the way we listen to it has changed a lot since Beatlemania, and it turns out so has the way the charts determine what's a hit. Hey, Jude. Don't make it bad. Go back five decades and Hey Jude was dominating. It held the top spot on the Hot 100 for nine weeks. What mattered then to Billboard were just two things, radio play and record sales. The sales aspect of it was to call up the record stores to find out what singles were actually being moved out of the store. And you could manipulate that by record labels kind of giving payola and money to different record stores saying, hey, instead of that song, can you say that this one is selling a lot? Decades passed. It was the early 90s before Billboard changed the bar of entry. Tracking barcode scans gave a more accurate picture of what albums were being bought. Suddenly, grunge and country music were on the charts. In the era of Drake, making it to the Hot 100 gives way to even more things. Downloads, streaming, both paid and free. Some say Billboard has gotten better over the years at reflecting what's actually popular. It's the best system that we have because it's really showing not necessarily how the record labels are working the chart for them, but truly what's an accurate portrayal of what is the most popular tracks in America. Tough for Beatle fans to hear, but Drake is more popular, at least on the Billboard charts.